Hello, Lauren here with Lauren Elizabeth Animal Art, and I welcome you to day 245 of my 365 days of color. The adorable winner for today's tutorial is Sophie, a Brussels Griffin, another tutorial in my Paint Your Dog Through the Storm series. Sophie and her mom, Gail, live in Sacramento, Texas. Before that, they were traveling all over the US together. She's now 14 years old and she's got this long floppy ears and a schnauzer like snout and she may look small but according to her mama she's got a queen bee personality. Now if you'd like to nominate your pet I won't tell you which pet I'm going to be doing next. You can do that in the comments down below. Simply list your pet's name, breed and something special about your pet. Okay so let's get painting Sophie. So you can access this traceable and a list of materials, the brushes I'm using, and my most used supplies, all listed in the description box below. There you can also find a link where you can learn how to paint your cat or dog in acrylics in my online animal art masterclass. Now once you have your paint set up and your traceable transferred, I'm going to grab my ruler and I'm using an 8x8 canvas, but I'm just going to create seven dashes at the top and at the bottom, which I'll then connect very lightly with my graphite pencil. And I'll only do this vertically and we'll draw this behind Sophie. So it's okay to go over Sophie's sketch, but what we're doing is creating the rows where we're going to paint those individual boxes in with the colors that we'll be mixing up soon. So I just have three lines for down here because Sophie covers up these areas and then I'm just going to join these lines with one solid line. I'm going to go very carefully so that I'm not covering over making too harsh a line over top Sophie. So you see here I'm only coming down to her head same here, only to her ear, but here is where I bring it all the way down. Now I like to connect a Bible verse or a quote with each of my paintings, and this one comes from Doreen Virtue. She says, every storm is followed by a rainbow. So whatever dark storm you find yourself in right now, it's not at the beginning, it's not in the middle, it's at the very end that comes the rainbow. And that leads me to our rainbow colored background. I'm going to be grabbing my palette knife here and what I'll do so that the colors don't compete with the black of Sophie's fur, I'm going to add lots of white to it. So these colors are going to be softer, brighter, and then Sophie will just be all blacks and grays and some browns and then of course the pinks for her sunglasses. So right now with my palette knife I'm mixing up fluorescent pink and white. For the rainbow I always think of Roy G. Biv. We have red, orange, yellow green, blue, indigo, and violet. So our goal is to mix up those colors and mix some colors in between. For the next color, I'm gonna pull in some of this pink that we just mixed and violet and lots more white. a bit too dark. I want to keep my colors light so I'm going to add in more white. And then to just wash off your paint palette if you want to go to an entirely different color you just use your paper towel and wipe it off or just wash it off and you can move to the next one. I'm going to add even more white to that. And then I'm going to pull in some purple and make an indigo with my blue. I'm adding more white and then here I go with some blue. So I have some blue, purple, and white and that's a beautiful color. That is really the color that we want with when it comes to lightness. It's really light. Uh, 
All right, I'm gonna pick up some white and go to my yellow. What a beautiful color. This is gonna be such a sunny color with lots of white and that's cadmium yellow. I love the color yellow. It's between blue and yellow that are my favorite colors. And that is perfect. So I'm gonna move on to the next one. Actually, I won't wash out my brush because I'll add some of that yellow with a tiny bit of red. This is important. Dominant colors are like reds, blues, purples. These often are very strong, so you don't need much at all. You just need the smallest amount. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. I love I love pink and I wanted to have two different types of pinks here. We have a, a very bright fluorescent pink and then we have a, a softer, more orange looking pink that we just mixed here. And move to our green. Now this is a dark green, this is a grass green, but use whatever green you have. If it is too dark, just add some yellow to it. I just picked up a little bit of grass green and white, and that's the green I have there. I added even more white to it because it became a bit dark. I'll mix up some of my fluorescent pink with a tiny bit of blue and some more white. I'm gonna mix up an orange. I wanna make like a, maybe like a tangerine color. So yellow with a, oh, I'll use some of this fluorescent pink. And then white. Oh, once again, I gotta add more white. Yeah, that's like a, a beautiful lemon, more of a lemon color, I think. And I'm not gonna add more white to that. I really like that. But I will add more white to my pink palette. Something about bright colors just cheers you up, doesn't it? It's just so energizing to look at such happy colors. Next, I'm gonna mix up more fluorescent pink, white, and cadmium yellow. I wanna get a more orange color than the one we just mixed. And without making it too dark, so add a good amount again to this color. Now this is the last color that I'm going to mix on my paint palette, but feel free to mix up a lot more using the ones we just mixed or entirely different ones. This background is just supposed to be fun and exciting. It's going to boost our mood. It's going to excite us about painting. So just have fun with it. Now continue mixing your colors. I'm just going to talk about how we're going to work this background. We're going to go up and down the rows. I'm going to start on the left side. And I'm just going to pick any color I want, but following a few different color rules. I'll be repeating colors quite a bit, and even in the same row, but not so they're touching. Now feel free to follow the Roy G. Biv for the rainbow. You can just go down the rows and do that if you want. I'm going to just play on complementary colors and also value. I'm using my size 2 filbert brush, and I'm going to place in the first box in the upper left hand corner. I'm going to start with yellow. And then after that, I'll place its complement 
which is violet. So our complementary colors are yellow and purple, red and green, blue and orange. And when placed next to one another, they give the strongest contrast. They complement each other better than any other colors placed together. And then I'm going to scatter the darkest colors on my paint palette around my background so that they're also not touching. And this helps to balance out the background. Although we added white to all our colors and we're working with a lot lighter, softer colors, we still have a dark violet and a dark blue, which I'll try to space out so that one side of the background doesn't have more dark colors than the other. And then an, another way to create balance in this painting is to not have, I'm not gonna place all my pinks in one corner or all my yellows in another. I may have a few boxes like this one. I'm gonna make like two purples right here and then I'm gonna move to a different color after that. So more, no more than like two or three in a row or to the right of it. The important thing as we work around Sophie is to make sure that you don't leave any partial boxes empty. I know it can be tricky, we're trying not to paint all over Sophie, but at the same time we're not trying to miss any boxes so that we have little gaps left over and then we have to try and remix these colors again to fill them in. Like the ears and around the snout fur, we want to have little strands of fur that cuts out into the background. So we still want to make sure we paint in majority of the background underneath her ears and around her snout. Now as I work down, once I get to the very bottom of this row, I should have an equal size square. I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm not trying to make this perfect and I'm going to eyeball as well going horizontally as I move to the right. I'm going to try and create these lines that are even. But if you don't trust yourself, by all means, you can create those horizontal lines just before you paint them in. Now I will be using white in some of these boxes. And that's what I'll be using next. Just make sure between colors you really wash out your brush so you're not getting any colors into your white or your other lighter colors. All right, so I have some more color tips for you. As we're talking about balancing out a painting, we can also do this by playing on warm and cool colors. So warm colors, I think of sunshine, those are yellows and oranges and reds. And then our cool colors, I think of like a rainstorm, blues and violets and indigos. Now we can have warmer blues and we can have cooler reds. But what I'm gonna do in each row is combine both warm and cool colors. Now I just want to make a note here, if you're short on time, this is part one of Sophie's tutorial which will work on the background and her eyes, nose, and mouth. And that's it for this tutorial, and then we'll finish off the fur on part two.
Now, as you're working through your colors, if you feel inspired to mix up some more, like I'm going to do here, go for it. I'm going to mix a lighter indigo. So I'm going to pull in this darker violet and this blue that we mixed up with lots of white. And I'll add that box next. Now, if you have to break this painting up into separate sittings, you can use saran wrap or aluminum foil, or if you already have a paint palette that you can cover, make sure you seal it really well, and then just come back to these colors later. It also helps to have a spray bottle so you can keep them damp at all times.
Now I want to mix up a warmer green. So I'm going to pull the lightest yellow on my paint palette and pull in some of my grass green into it and that'll be the color I use next. Here comes another color that I'm going to mix up. I'm going to use the first green that we mixed up on our paint palette, not the one that we recently mixed, and I'll pull in some blue and some more white. I know it's going to feel so weird to paint over so much of Sophie's ears and around her face, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Once we're all done our background, we're going to give it a good long time to dry, and then we're going to layer our blacks and grays and some browns over top this.
Now here's where I'm talking about those sneaky little boxes that we can hardly see. I'm going to fill this whole box in, but then with a smaller size zero liner brush, I'm going to fill in those boxes to the left. So I usually never just add one coat to my background, I will add multiple. So on the boxes that look thin in color, 
I'm going to just reapply another coat very carefully. And I'll also use this time to touch up some of those boxes, just trying to make them a little cleaner looking. Now I wasn't really sure how I was going to layer the fur to the left of Sophie's face, so I pulled in another box of color there, but I ended up painting over it later, so you don't really need to add that. But we do need to let this background dry fully so that we don't get our hands on it when we're painting the fur, eyes, nose, and mouth. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to paint the eyes, then the nose, then the mouth.
All right, so hopefully your background is dry or at the least tacky. I'm going to pick up my size zero liner brush and making sure it's clean and damp, I'm going to go in with just black and I'm going to outline all the parts of Sophie's eyes, both of them, and then fill in the pupils. Be careful about that left eye, which we see a lot more detail on. Sophie's right eye, which makes her look so cute, is slightly turned to the right, so we don't have to add too much detail to that one. All right, so take your time here. We've got a lot of lines. I just outlined the main eye shape, and then there's another outline on the outside of that line, and then there's another line around her iris, which I'll do next. I'll need a thicker brush to fill in those pupils, so I'll just outline Sophie's right eye, and then I'll fill in both pupils with a size one round brush. All right, so here I go with my size one round brush and I'm gonna fill in both pupils with just black. I'm adding raw sienna and burnt sienna to my paint palette, and I'll be mixing both those together to fill in the iris of the left eye. Be very careful that you don't add too much burnt sienna. We want to keep this lighter on the light side, and I'll just carefully go around that left eye pupil. Now with the light source hitting her left eye on the right lower right of her left eye, I'm just going to pull in some white while that's wet and blend that right in there. Now instead of using just white to fill in the white area on the right eye, I'm going to mix up a gray. So I'm gonna mix white with a little bit of black. I'm gonna make a medium gray, not too light, because it's not getting much light on that side. And we'll eventually be adding glasses over top. So we wanna keep that relatively dark. Now we want to use that gray for the left eye, but it's going to be lighter. So I'm going to add more white to that gray and fill in the white areas around the left eye. Now very carefully, I'll even use this gray to outline the areas 
the gaps in between the outer lines we created around her left eye. So just be careful you don't go over the black, and even if you do, we can just touch those up. Now I'll also use this color to add highlights on both the eyes. I can highlight the middle of the white area on the right eye and add a little dab over top the pupil on the left. And then for the left eye, I can add three little dabs that lay over top that black pupil in the upper left hand corner. Now on that right eye, I just see some darker gray that I can put on the top of the eye and even at the bottom. So I just pulled in some black into that gray that we added and I just darkened it up on the top of the eye and a little bit around the bottom. Now being that Sophie is quite old, I'm, I see some fogginess in her eyes on the white area on her right eye. So I'm gonna pull in some raw sienna into that area while it's still wet. All right, so now I'm just gonna touch up those eyes with my black again, all around the outer edge and inside the eyes. So next we're going to mix up a few different dark and light grays. We'll use black to outline the nose. That's what we'll do first, but we want to have, I'm going to mix up two different grays, a dark gray with black and white. So a little bit of white, lots of black. And then I'm going to pull some aside and create a light gray. And then to add the final highlights, we'll add some white. I'll even get a little bit lighter than that. Okay, so let's wash out our brushes. I'm still gonna be using my size one round brush. I'll use that to outline the nose and fill in the nostrils. And I'll outline it just with black with a clean damp brush. So we have quite a bit more black to fill in on this nose just because of how dark it is in this photo. And so I filled in the nostril, but what I'm gonna do is on the right side, since our light source is coming from the hitting the left side of the face, we're gonna actually fill in more of that right side, if you watch me, than what, um, what's normal, I guess, what we're, we're used to painting in. So I'm actually gonna use straight black to pull this all the way down. Notice I didn't cover up this area, that's gonna be a highlight. So I'm gonna pull it in to the right up until the bottom of that nostril. Okay, I'm just filling in that entire bottom area of the nostril. And then above the nostril, not directly above, but a little bit to the right, I'm gonna pull black all the way down, which is where we have a highlight right there on the top side of the nostril. I will leave that white. Okay, now climbing to the left, I'm gonna use a black to outline the top of it 
and along the entire indent very carefully down. I'm gonna to need to wash up my brush because it's starting to dry to my bristles. And now on the left side of the nose, so we already filled in that nostril, we're gonna actually start filling in more of the left side of the nose right by that indent. And then I'm gonna pull it down and out to about there on the bottom left side. And then I'll just outline the rest of it. You know what I can actually also do? This darkness even climbs up here. So there's only the tiniest little bit that helps our viewer know a little bit of light is just hitting the corner edge of that nostril. So you want to make sure this part of the nose and this part of the nose are symmetrical so they're not like lopsided. gonna do is I'm gonna since we are working on this part of the nose I'm gonna start working on the mouth now with the black so if you watch me I'm just gonna outline the entire tongue with this black Now in the areas over the fur, even in this first layer, I'm going to start going in the direction that I see the fur laying. So I'm going to move my brush up and down at an angle on the left side, and it kind of curves the opposite way on the right side around the tongue. This whole area isn't getting much light. It even comes down here. And then there's a shadow from the tongue being casted on the chin. So as you can see, I'm not going to pull the black all the way up to the nose, but pretty far. that we'll use for the tongue it'll be a very dark pinkish gray right here so it looks it's not just this bright colored pink tongue floating it'll just be dark medium and then we'll put the very lightest highlights on the very end of the tongue okay so we have even more darkness on the right side I'm gonna be super generous with this black layer since there is just so much black so the fur just folds around this side of the face. All right, so that's what I'll do for the mouth. I kind of just tied it in with the nose. Let's go back to that nose. So we created our dark gray. Because it's so dark, I'm going to start with my light gray and then I'll see if I need to uh, go back to that dark gray. So I just picked up that light gray that we mixed up. I'm going to fill in all the white that we see on Sophie's nose. Okay, and while that's wet, I'm gonna go back to this dark gray. Okay, and I'm gonna blend it to the left, on the left side of the nostril at the bottom. Then I'm gonna blend it on the top here, for the shadow being casted by the fur above it. A 
little bit along that highlight to the right of the left side of the nostril. And then I'm gonna bring this highlight in a little bit more with this dark gray. And even the top of this one. So I, I basically touched, hugged a lot of the light gray highlights that we just added. Okay, and then while that's wet, I'll go in with just white and I'll make sure this is dry and not any drips coming off of it. I'm gonna use just white, the tip of my brush. And because I see definite texture, I'm gonna do little white dots in the areas that we placed light gray for our lightest highlights. Don't have to put it on this side of the nose that's just not quite light enough right on that left side of the nose around that left nostril where we will have those dots okay so I'm just gonna touch that nose up with the black This black into this part of the, the highlight just pulled it down a little bit to open up that nostril all right so let's work on that tongue so I'm going to use raw sienna permanent red and white and a little bit of black to create a little bit of a dark gray so let's mix up some colors I'm gonna actually yeah so raw sienna white, permanent red, and a little bit of black for our first dark value. I'm going to mix up some more of that. That's permanent red, raw sienna, white with a little bit of black. There we go. I'll wash up my brush and move to the medium value, which is going to be all that without the black. Permanent red, white, and some raw sienna. I, I wanna pull out the pinks in this tongue, so I'm gonna make it relatively pink. I added a good amount of permanent red. I'll add in a little bit more raw sienna and white. And I think I might have made my light value, so what I'll do is I'll mix up a little bit slightly darker value of that, raw sienna permanent red with a little bit less white. So we have a dark, medium, light. All right, let's test this out. I'm going to start with my medium value first, and while it's wet, we'll add in our darks and our lights. And if you notice, there is just the smallest amount of this color underneath the very tip of the tongue because we're looking at it from the front view and on the corner right side. That's where I see this color. And a little bit too on the left side. And while that's wet, I'll go with my dark value. And is this dark enough? Yeah, I think that's dark enough. We might have to go a bit darker than that. Yeah, I'm gonna go a bit darker. I'm gonna add black to this color. I wanna create a dark line for this indent in the tongue, which goes all the way to the front where the highlight is here, where we left it white. And I'm going to move to the left and right on the inside, on the surface of the tongue. Actually, I'm going to wash up my brush now and go in with straight black. 
because I see that it's super dark, I'm gonna cut straight from the back of the mouth in towards the center of the tongue, forward. Oh, and do you know where else we can add that? Right along the side, right here. It's real dark, real strong, which I can blend into those pinkish browns and then even a little bit on the top left side on this part of the tongue. All right, so while my, my next step is to with a clean damp brush to use the highlight the bright pink we made to get this area it comes up higher this highlight on this part of the tongue and I'm just gonna carefully fill in the rest of the white that was left over Alright, so I'm actually going to add in more white to this light pink I made. And I'll use that to add the final little details, the final little highlight, right here. And I do notice something, I'm going to go back to this medium red we made because I noticed it dips a little bit here more than I made it right at the front and that's also where I'll bring the black forward a little bit more Alright, so do any touch-ups you need to with black. That's my next step. I'm just going to go around the tongue to shape it. So I want to have like the bottom kind of curved down. This is curved and then two curves here. Oh, oh dear, I got some black on that. Well, actually, wait a minute. I'm seeing that there is some black there. Oh, look at that. That worked out well. Yeah, and then I can bring this down on that side. I'm washing up my brush. And I'll go back to this dark. Oh, it dried up. I'm gonna mix up some more. Raw Sienna, permanent red and white. And I'm going to darken that up on that side of the tongue. All right, creative. So we have reached the end of part one. If it's not already up, you can head on over to part two. Thank you so much for watching and make sure you comment just to nominate your pet or multiple pets. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Have a blessed day. Bye.